Hi, everybody. Welcome to the City Girls Pod. And this is a show where we talk about all things sex in the city. And we are diving into the Carrie Diaries. Today, we're talking about season one, episodes two and three. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner. And Jack's is here. Rachel, we're back at it again. Yeah. Yep. 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 And when this airs, I think we will actually maybe be together. I, <laughs> so I think exciting. we will be. Oh, Rachel, sorry. I lost you because I was trying to turn off my Hallmark keys zoom chat hang on can you see me yeah i see you now yeah yeah um, zoom. Uh, can you see me now okay yeah i can see you <laughs> yes we get to hang out in utah <laughs> the sundance film festival is going on as we speak and last year i was just a complete grump because i hardly liked anything at sundance and this year i'm i haven't had a single film that i like hated Oh my gosh, which is excited. amazing for Sundance, but I am yeah. being more picky about what I watch this year because after last year's experience, you know, yes, you <laughs> yes. And I have the, I didn't get approved for press, so I don't have the virtual access. Uh, and so, you know, I had to kind of have to be a little bit pickier of what I'm watching, but it's been really fun. I I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've seen nine movies so far. Uh, and, uh, they've all been enjoyable on some level. What's your favorite so far? My favorite is actually a documentary called Judy Bloom forever. It was so good. So well done. I, uh, the, the, the thing that makes me the most is, is people writing letters to Judy Bloom and they just all the letters that she would get in the correspondence she would have with people was amazing so i i made me i'm gonna have to read i mean i wanted to read uh, hey god it's, it's me margaret uh before the movie comes out but this made me even more want to read it because I, I think maybe i read it when i was little but i haven't read it in years and years so it was so anyway, my favorite book when i it was, was like, so good going on 12. yeah i mean there were parts where i was just like bawling and oh. i it was so good yeah and then this little movie called radical look out for it it's uh eugenio derbis who i love he's so good in everything i've ever seen even the overboard remake he was good he's just he's really good and he plays this teacher that gets into the super underperforming failing school in mexico and it, it is a movie we've seen a lot of times this you know oh, this teacher radical? okay i'm writing it down. radical yeah and it was so well done and so moving and i cried buckets, cried buckets of tears, tears. and uh, it it was outstanding so those are the two so i'm far. glad that you had good experience this year rather than last year's yes <laughs> <laughs> But let's talk about the Carrie Diaries. This is going to be fun. And uh, we have episodes two and three. I have to say I had a couple not my favorite things about uh, this these episodes. But for the most part, I, I enjoyed them. But, uh, but let's dive in. The first one's called Lie With Me. And it's desperate for some alone time with Sebastian. Carrie must lie to her father and bail on plants with her sister Dorit. Larissa wants to do a photo shoot with Carrie's purse. So overall, what do you think of this one? Um, so this is interesting that I'm discovering about Carrie Bradshaw as a teenager. Mm -hmm. I actually feel like even though she makes mistakes and she's lying and she's bailing on plans with her sister, I actually feel like at least the Anna Sophia Robb plays it it actually has more heart and relatability than even Sarah Jessica Parker's Carrie Bradshaw. And I kind of get why she does things more and I don't um, villainize her as much. And look, I love SJP. I love Carrie Bradshaw and Sex in the City, but I just think there's so much heart in teenage Carrie. And I loved getting to see her go through these things and also like really experience this remorse for when she messes up. I thought this one was, was um, fun, but also really tugged at the heartstrings too. What did you think of it? I agree. This is definitely the strongest of the two episodes we're talking about. And I, I think that they did a really good job of avoiding a lot of uh, landmines they could have fallen into. And in particular with Dorit and making her not just the sullen, miserable teenager, which I hate, 
uh, that trope and they made her a well-rounded human character who you can totally see her perspective and and uh, the, uh, the 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 disappointment in getting it's one thing to get dissed by a friend or someone but your but your sister that that's that's hard ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast especially at christmas do you enjoy the holiday previews recaps interviews and bonus episodes if the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Especially when she's just getting close to Carrie now. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, they're grounded and they're having, you know, these times together. And her mom has just passed away. So Carrie is like her female role model. Yeah. And and really her, you could see her, you could see her enthusiasm and get peaked and getting excited and, and, you know, having somebody actually seem to care about her. And so for her to just blow her off was very devastating. Yeah. 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 And I I think all these characters are really well done. I mean, I, I, what'd you think of the whole thing with uh, Maggie and Walt? Oh, I mean, this is painful. It's painful to watch Walt struggle with his sexuality in the sense that like he's feeling guilty and bad about not being attracted to Maggie. Maggie is like, well, why don't you like me? And also she's having this affair with this cop who doesn't really care about her. There's no real intimacy there. So there's a lot here that it's like, wow, this is just a very painful experience. And there's no villain in this situation either. It's just hard. I was a little bit confused about the whole cop. Who did, did we get introduced him before? I I didn't there, feel like I'd seen him. He pulled up, I think, in the pilot, and she was like flirting with him, and you knew that they had like a thing going on. Oh, but okay, I okay. also thought that maybe they were really in love or something. So like. I didn't realize until this episode that no, it's just kind of a physical thing for him. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little bit weird on this show and I don't think you would see it now that like every single character except for Carrie has a relationship with older men. I think that's a really good point. I think you're right that that would not be something that's the case Mm -hmm. now because I mean, it's, it's, genuinely problematic like mm-hmm. even the college boy that's probably technically okay but I think I think that mouse is 16 and this college guy is probably 19 so there's there's just some uncomfortability here yeah. also I at least this is my high school experience it's not that realistic like I didn't really meet guys or girls that were in college um until I was a senior and some of my friends had graduated. So I think that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had an older brother, so I, I, you know, had a new, his friends, uh, that, uh, he was you know, two and a half years older than me. So he had some older friends. Uh, and, uh, so I, you know, I knew them a little bit, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's certainly the exception rather than the rule. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And <clears throat> And then also these kind of shows for whatever reason, we'll talk more about in the next episode, love having teacher student 
plots. And this is like more mild because it's in the past. So you're not seeing it. But like I remember Dawson's Creek had had that a total whole plot with uh, Pacey and and the yeah. teacher. And 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 uh, I mean, I don't watch tons of these shows, but uh, but I, I, I know that that's a common thread and I don't really understand why that's a common thread. It, it's interesting. I've talked about this and I've shared this with people. I know we actually had quite a few of those relationships in my high school. But when I say that to people, they're like, what? That was in my high school experience. So I think I just, it, it happened at least three or four times when I was in high school. Well, I was probably naive to it happening if it happened. The only one I can think of in my high school was there was this teacher who married a former student, but it was after, it was still kind of skeevy and weird, but it was after she was an adult, so. Okay, so it was yeah. down the line. So he was a yeah. lot older and and she was, I don't know, 18, 20s, whatever. Um, yeah. But, uh, but that's the only thing I can think of. But again, I was, I was pretty, uh, sheltered i guess from a, so i probably if it ha- did happen i probably didn't know about it or, know about or, or it. heard about it yeah uh, but yeah. i don't know it's not I my favorite about it because it was like a town-wide scandal every time it happened i was like oh man <laughs> it wasn't me being perceptive <laughs> uh so yes we have carrie being grounded and my dad <laughs> my dad when we were grounded he would sing the song. Really? He would say grounded, marked with a coward's bell. <laughs> Wait, what's the whole song? What's the song? Is I think it's from a TV show or something. It's a he would say he would go, grounded, marked with a coward's bell. What do you do when you grounded and you know you're a man? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I don't even know where that came from. Effective. Very effective. I don't, I wouldn't want to hear that when I was getting grounded. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Like I don't know where. That. <laughs> it's not coming up. Maybe my dad just made it up. I have no idea, but. It's an original. <laughs> I mean, grounding was not an effective punishment for, for me uh, because we, I mean, it was maybe more than for my other two, for my other siblings, because, uh, they, they were real homebodies, but, you know, I mean, we had enough to do in my room and stuff. So it really wasn't that, like that big a punishment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, staying home, isn't that bad? <laughs> yeah. Well, and we used to make deals with my mom or like, <laughs> it's funny now in retrospect, like we thought we were being smart, but it was probably a worse punishment to, so they would be like, we'll do, we'll weed the garden, which I hate gardening so much. And, uh, and <laughs> she'd be like, okay, sure. <laughs> you want to do weed the You're garden? Like, okay, great. We'd make deals with us. <laughs> but, uh, it, yeah. I mean, in reality, that's way worse. Than <laughs> oh yeah. And they get something out of it though. So it's great for them. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so Walt doesn't want to be with Maggie. And of course we know that he's closeted from the pilot, uh, but it's definitely, it's very, I thought that was all handled very, very sweetly. And very, it was good. I liked that whole thing there. And then they break up and, and uh, you know, she gets upset. I remember one time when <laughs> one of my, one, one of my roommates had this on and off again, boyfriend. She, she she thankfully didn't marry this guy but she kept breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and one time she she uh she we went around uh provo where i went to school and she had torn up all these pictures showing them oh i love it that's a great kind of therapy yeah it was (laughs) i felt like that for maggie she she really needed uh, when she tears apart the bear, which I think is also in the next episode. Yeah, she got to really get her anger out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we have Larissa. Uh, she wants to put the purse in the interview magazine. And uh, and so she 
she finds a way to get there uh, to the um, photo shoot. And I, I think that it was more, I was very concerned that she's like carrying around this box full of like legal documents. Me too. <laughs> Just setting it down all these places. I'm like. Zipping around like it's, <laughs> it. I was so stressed because I used to personal assistant babysit and I have a bunch yeah. of errands to do. And I know how it takes so long to do errands in the city. And I was just so stressed for her getting back in time with the Chinese food. And I, I mean, she, it was a clutch move that she had that scarf to give to her boss. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and that she managed to pull it off and not, I thought for sure there was going to be more to do about that box of stuff. I thought she was going to like lose it or lose something, or I thought that was going to come up, but it didn't. I was kind of glad it didn't. I didn't need the business of that. There's like enough going on enough that yeah. I was like, yeah, no, let her be okay this time. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sebastian calls her at the office and her boss was pretty funny. I thought, uh, and she's like, do I care about the private life of my high school employee? No. She was yeah, her good, boss I thought. Funny. I like her. Yeah, she was funny. Uh, so Sebastian asks her out and, uh, and then they, she's going to go swimming with Dorit and she forgets about it because of with, uh, Sebastian. I'm not really sure why she couldn't also swim with Dorit. That was my only thing. Like, like there can't be three people swimming. Yeah. And even if she wanted like a little like sexy time with Sebastian, she could have just changed, like hung out with Dora right away and then been like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to hang out with Sebastian. Like, I don't think she needed to, she actually could have dealt with the double booking in a way that, I mean, she waited for Sebastian and he didn't even come right away. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really, really get that, but Dora was upset as anybody would be. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she also gave up something that she really wanted to do with her friends. Mm-hmm. She's scary. Yeah. And then this is when we have Maggie getting uh, picked up by the cop, which was a little bit weird. Uh, And they looked so similar. I thought that Walt and the cop guy looked kind of similar. So it was, I had to kind of rewind and be like, is that, who is that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It does Uh, feel a little bit icky. Yeah. So Sebastian meets her dad. And he says, my grandfather taught me the handshake makes the man. But the, her dad says, you can't date Sebastian. Yeah. And I think that that is just stupid parenting. <laughs> I do too. Like, it's completely. <laughs> I mean, not having a conversation and just saying, no, you can't do it is not going to be effective. Right. And even if he wanted to say, you know what, if you're going to keep spending time with him, I want to have him over for dinner. I want to get to know him. I want it to be within these hours, but it to just this blanket thing. It's not very, I mean, he he basically sees Sebastian as like a predator. And and so he doesn't want his daughter to be around a predator, which understandable, but the way he goes about doing that and just laying out some kind of edict that she can't what she can and cannot do it's just asking for trouble it's just asking for her to then pursue it even more instead of having a conversation and if something like this this seems like this would have been bigger news so i i mean i guess they're playing like he only told his his shrink yeah and And so he you know dr client uh privilege but I feel like there had to be some other way to be like, to, to talk about it or have someone else talk about it with her or something. Also, let me be very clear that it's not like Carrie's dad found out that Sebastian assaulted someone else. Like he was the victim Mm -hmm. of an assault. Like his teacher was an adult and she took advantage of him. Like we, like, even though he's a dude, like, we have to be, he's a kid. So yeah. like, I think that it's yes. also yeah. in, 
in the rear view mirror of, I think how we treat things like that now, I think it would have been with more respect to the position that he was in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and either way, just telling your child that, no, you can't do that is just asking for them. It's like, if somebody says, don't think of a purple elephant, you immediately think of a purple elephant, right? (laughs) <laughs> That's yeah. the way the human don't brain think, works. Don't think of that purple elephant. Think of the purple elephant. Yeah. <laughs> and you're right. That's all he was doing and making Carrie want to do it even more. Mm-hmm. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. Bastion shows up there's like a group hug with Dorit and then we get Seth calling Mouse uh and uh and so yeah I mean and the other thing about this is I mean I I do think that purse was pretty cute but is it really going to be that interesting to Larissa like this um, sort of I agree with you especially because her name is on it. like what I think is interesting yeah. about is like it would be like oh this purse is awesome this design is awesome let's do a line or let's like photograph a bunch of purses can you make five of these and we'll use them yeah. all two like she's not gonna need that one gosh darn purse you know what I mean like Carrie can yeah I, I mean I guess if they were doing the equivalent of a 1980s like hack column like how to hack you know that like they have hack videos for if they were doing that, like sort of handicrafts, then yeah. handicrafts uh, fashion, then maybe, I guess. But I just feel like for a high end, this interview magazine, they're, they're not going to want Carrie's nail polish purse. <laughs> right. Also, let's be clear. If Carrie's nail polish purse is that important to them, which Loris is saying it is. Yeah. She can go and get it. They can send a, yeah, a courier, a courier to get it from Carrie's office and then just yeah. bring it back. Like, right. I bet it adds the drama and we're here for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And then we also have Donna uh, at the country club and continuing to sort of flirt with Sebastian and everything. Uh, so that's kind of uh, part of the developing story. She Donna. Gets on my so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and the whole thing is about when do you lie and when do you tell the truth is sort of the theme of the episode. Like, yeah. like Walt's obviously lying. And there's a point where he says, this is the first time Walt wasn't lying when he yeah. breaks up with Maggie. And uh, it is but, a really sad, beautiful scene though. Yeah. And Carrie's lying throughout about Sebastian. Sebastian's lying. He's not telling everything. Uh, so Yeah. It's kind of the theme. Uh, and obviously with kids, like you don't, you don't need to tell them everything all at once. <laughs> right. uh, and, but you, you also, you also need to just respect them. And, uh, and uh I don't know it's a tough thing I mean being a parent is really hard I I mean I'm not a parent but I think it looks really hard (laughs) yeah I agree and I I do think though that you want to be able to like especially when your child is a teenager really like connect with them and express what's behind that not just these sort of yeah yeah because teens are mini adults you know they have they have they they don't have it all figured out and they need help they need guidance, but they also have a lot to offer. And, uh, and that's why I hate it when they're only portrayed as these like monsters. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, I don't like it. And I remember not liking that in, in when I was a teenager, I remember not I liking either. that. I didn't relate to it. And also like, even, you know, I think as you're going through puberty, like you are having a lot of big feelings and those big feelings are not always like sullen yeah. and miserable. There's just a lot going on and we need to 
like address that time period with more grace and understanding, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I thought this was a, a pretty strong episode. I would give it, I think, a eight out of 10. Me too. I would give it an eight or an 8.5. Um, the pilot was like so wonderful out of the gate. And this is like keeping up. Like I, I really, I did enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the next episode is called Read Before Use. And this one is Carrie snoops through Tom's work files and it covers some alarming information about Sebastian's past. Larissa takes Carrie, Mouse, and Seth to a performance art club. So this one, I had a lot of problems with this episode. Um, It had some good stuff. Like, I mean, we got to know the dad a lot more in this episode. And he's, he's really playing the hot widower card. (laughs) <laughs> okay here's my thing with this he's right he's, out of a hallmark movie <laughs> he's playing it but like he does he's not even playing it in a savvy way like he doesn't even know he's playing it at first he's like wait what yeah. you think that this is hot by the end he 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 realizes it yeah and when his yeah. friend kind of helps him but uh but yeah he's out buying tampons he's he's trying his best to be a good dad he sure is and <laughs> a dad of two teenagers with a with a wife that has passed away like you're managing a lot Mm -hmm. oh yeah no question so carrie's really impressed with larissa says her life is exotic and then she brings her friends to this uh art exhibit and it reminded me a lot of that episode of sex in the city where they go to the living you know art exhibit yes i was (laughs) the exact same thing rachel i It felt it had very sex in the city vibes. You can see like, this is a young Carrie. Like, yeah, I, I, well, I'm interested to hear what you thought about it. Well, I mean, I loved her dress. It was very like uh, impressionistic, really cool uh, dress in the scene. And I loved Mouse's dress too. That was really cute. And, and so that was fun. And I guess I understand what they were trying to get her to a point where she sticks up for herself, but the very idea that any adults would be pressuring a 16 year old girl to expose herself in a public setting is outrageous. I think this is another one of those things that like looking at it, I mean, this wasn't even that long ago, but looking at it now, we're like, I mean, that, what, that, that would be against the law. Like yeah. it, it's not even like it's a woman telling Carrie, like when you're alone with yourself, like, look, look at it. And like, um, you know, appreciate the beauty of who you are. It's exposing yourself to a room full of adults. Like it, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. And Uh, The fact that, I mean, I I guess it's good that she had the guts to, to, to not do it, but, but yeah, I mean, there's, that's, it'd be criminal behavior. Like literally that's like, literally criminal. It's like, that's child pornography there. Yes. No question. No. And, and so that was bizarre Uh, and to think this is like a cw show a network show it's not even hbo uh that was very very shocking to me and and they were acting like the whole thing with sebastian as far as her reading his file and everything where i'm not saying that's good but they were like putting that on the same level and i'm like no no i mean carrie really gets villainized in this episode for reading the file. I understand why it's against the law. I understand why it's an invasion of privacy and why it's wrong. But honestly, like, I'm kind of like, big the wolf. thing is, <laughs> is that if he doesn't want anybody reading the files, there's a great solution for that. Lock the files and lock the door. Uh, so sure she shouldn't have done what she she did but like there's no reality where if he's if he's has a home office of some kind that he would not have that under complete lock and key that would be 
wildly irresponsible. Yeah, that's on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and and you're absolutely right too to paint Sebastian as the predator, which is what the dad is doing, is wrong on many levels because he was the one who was a victim of an adult. Yeah. Yeah. It's so and- upsetting. It's it's like we we are looking at these children who are they are teenagers and and yes they in two years they'll be adults but they're not adults yet and we're making them be on the same level of responsibility like you said Carrie um with the files or like asking her to like expose herself in front of all these people I'm just like no they might look like adults but they're not adults ew stop this please stop Uh, now bizarre so Maggie uh, breaks is is cleansing her room of Walt, including tearing apart the the bear he gave her, uh, which which tracks. <laughs> you do that. I if, she's, she's like when she gave up the identity of girlfriend, she leaned into the identity of drama queen. It's fun. Yeah, I'm having yeah, fun yeah. with her character. Yeah, I I think so. And so then she goes on a date with Sebastian. And, uh, he says, uh, the, he says, uh, that, uh, where'd you learn to kiss? And well, she says, where'd you learn to kiss? And he says, I had a good teacher. Okay. So here's the thing, Rachel. That I, was very awkward. I, okay. For me, I had the opposite reaction. I was like, that's hilarious. Like, is it awkward? Yes. But I thought that the writing of it was really great because, it was like, I had a good teacher. And then the look on Carrie's face is like, record scratch. <laughs> like, like the art teacher was, yeah, I guess. Literally, oh, boy. he had a good teacher. Like the, the double entendre, that was really <laughs> funny for me. Even though if what we analyze and think about, it's gross and so out of pocket, yeah. the line was really, I thought, funny. <laughs> well, her and her reaction was was funny. Uh, so then- so I am so we, impressed that Sophia Rob. Yeah. And so then Dorrit gets Marcy the hamster. She's she, the, the security at this pet store is very lacking. She's able to smuggle a hamster out of the pet store. Walk right out. <laughs> that was, that was funny. Probably the funniest part of the episode. Um, I, I should have known better that it wasn't going to be. But I was literally screaming when she stepped on the Twinkies or the cupcakes. Yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> and if it wasn't, everything's okay. It's yeah, that would have been grisly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I should have known, but I'm I'm anxious with that kind of stuff. So I was like, yeah. Okay. Well, so the dad and, her, and his friend go to Singles Bar. And again, he's turning on the hot widower, charm left and right. Uh, <laughs> and then. Uh, so they're at the, this show at the Franklin furnace and mouse leaves. Cause she feels uncomfortable. And I'm like, yeah, that certainly would have been me. That's for sure. I really actually enjoy mouse's relationship with her boyfriend. I like that. Yeah. He's like, I never had a girlfriend before, so I didn't really know what this was and let's go get ice cream. And I love you because not, I love you, but I like yeah. you because you are dorky and you want to go serendipity. Like I think this mm-hmm. whole thing was great. I think they're, even it though it's it this older man thing that I'm like, oh, whatever. I do think that they are well-suited and I'm excited to see where this relationship goes. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, Mouse as a character. I think she's good. Yeah. And we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies 
or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. And Maggie comes over uh, with the bear uh, trying to get it repaired. And so then her and, and uh, Dorrit uh, look for the hamster. And I think that's always a fun thing when when you get a chance to hang out with your siblings, friends, just yeah. you, you know, like, I, I don't think that happened that much for me with my brother's friends. Uh, but, but the few times, I don't know, it's, it, it's like, Oh, maybe they think I'm cool just for me. You know? I love that too. And also like Maggie notes that like, she notes that she had a great time hanging out with Dora. She tells Carrie yeah. that. So I, I yeah. love that this was like a really fun, liking to see how these two characters interact I enjoyed it a lot yeah and uh and then yeah Seth and Mouse go to ice cream at Serendipity I didn't even realize that Serendipity was that old 1984 that's a good question I mean I know it rose to popularity because uh Oprah you know and the movie yeah and the movie right Let's see if it says here. Oh my gosh, it's way old. 1954. 1950. Wow. <laughs> I had no idea it was that old. Yeah, I didn't know it was that old. I knew it's been around for a little while, but I didn't know it was 1954. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've never been because the line is always insane. We should go next time you come. Yeah. I have a frozen hot chocolate. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. <laughs> If you, we can make reservations, but here's the thing. You can't reserve just for dessert. You have to eat dinner there or lunch and the food isn't that great except for the hot chocolate. So you basically, you'd have to take a hit on not enjoying the meal that much. Mm. So and there's so, many good, there's so many good places in New York, you know, it's like, why go to a meeting? It's like, I mean, I'm sure it's better than Ellen Stardust, but the worst food I have ever had at a commercial establishment. It was, I mean, Ellen should be embarrassed. It was terrible. <laughs> so great bad. Singing. I Great singing, terrible food. Yeah. I mean, the singing was fine, but oh my gosh, I, I was just, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. The food it was not so bad. bad. It was unedible. Like l- literally it was just absolutely disgusting. I, I could not believe that anybody would serve that like what did you get do you remember I got pasta oh yeah yeah and and but then my my friend got a burger and it was just the worst burger I mean I I just everything even the ice cream was bad like how do you screw up like vanilla ice ice cream yeah it's pretty hard to mess up ice cream but they can do it yeah it was I was shocked I I just it was so bad (laughs) Like don't go there if you're watching don't go down and start us it is garbage yeah. eat, eat before and just enjoy the singing yeah i mean there's a mcdonald's across the street i would have yeah. way rather gone to mcdonald's oh god i love mcdonald's french fry yeah, yeah. yeah the french fries are good, really good. <laughs> i like the little hamburgers <laughs> yeah mcdonald's they they know and mcdonald's ice actually, cream is pretty yeah, good actually yeah. really good ice cream <laughs> anyway uh, and so she says that what I wanted was Sebastian and no man not even my father could stop me and uh and then the dad finds out that she read the files he gets upset uh and then Sebastian gets upset that she knows about the teacher and I mean I feel like they, I mean, I guess they just barely started to date. And so it makes sense. He wouldn't have told her this really personal thing, but on the other hand, if it's kind of public knowledge, like she's going to find out. So you're probably better off telling, talking about it early. And it's I, always better when things like that come from you. I got really mad at Sebastian here because I felt like what he did, I saw a flash into Carrie's future And, you know, your love map is formed when you're younger. Your love map is what you're attracted to. And when he was like, you're overanalyzing everything, Carrie, and blah, 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 and like kind of berating her for how she was. I'm like, oh, no, you're gaslighting this 
young girl right now. And I see big talk down to her like that. People have always said to Carrie, like, you think too much or too complicated. And I hated that he said this. Now, do I understand why he did feel like it was an invasion of his privacy because he didn't tell too many people? I understand he's embarrassed, all those things, but I was so angry at him. And the way he like walked away from her and was so dismissive of her when she was actually being very understanding of him. I was so angry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I understand why he would feel violated and hurt. Uh, And also like, it's got to hurt that she didn't come to him and talk to him, you know, that she kind of went this underhanded way, but on the other hand, it is what it is. She knows. So you have to kind of deal with it and not just storm off. Yeah. But he's also young and been through a, sounds like a trauma. Yep. I I, I doubt that this show is going to address it as such, but we know it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so then she makes up with her dad. And the final thing is one thing you have to know about labels. They only matter if you let them stick. Also, one thing I do want to note is that Sebastian's mom left. And the fact that his mom left and he also was assaulted mm-hmm. by this female teacher. There's just so much in that, that I do, have, I do have a lot of empathy for this kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it is hard in, in your teen years because there are so many labels. There are so many, uh, clicks and ways to be identified with. And you, I always had a hard time with people at church in particular that would say like, choose your friends wisely. They would say things like that. And and I always felt like, what? I, I don't choose. I'm just friends with the people who want to be friends with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes, it is good to tell kids to be careful about your, you know, peer pressure and everything, but, but it doesn't really solve the problem when what you're really asking them to do instead of choose your friends wisely, it's saying sometimes you have to choose no friends versus bad friends. Yeah. And that's a really hard thing for a teenager because you're so dependent on your friends yeah. for uh, everything. And they're more important than family when you're for most teenagers. And yeah. so when you tell them, choose your friends wisely, or you've chosen not great influences as your friends, it's not like there's this other friend group. That's just like oh. waiting for you to be like, Oh, okay, I'll choose them. And I, I, hey. vividly rem- I remember this in high school. There was this group that a couple of the girls from church were in uh, that were like uh, A plus students and really, really great. And for some reason, I saw them as like the kind of friends that I should should be choosing. Yeah. And my friends, even though they were perfectly like fine and normal, uh, they were kind of drama geeks and whatever. And for whatever yeah. reason, I, I felt like, oh, this other group is the more like better group for me. And so I remember sitting next to them and trying to like become friends with this, this other group. And and they weren't unkind. They were fine to me, but they just weren't really interested in being my friend. You know, they never like invited me or or to do anything or whatever. In the same way your other friends were invested. Yeah. And, And so I finally just kind of realized, I'm like, this is stupid. Uh, why am I doing this when I actually have friends who want to be like with friends. me? But for like whatever, it's hard not to buy into that whole thing of like, who should I be friends with? Yeah. But you hear that all, at least I did all the time at church. Yeah. In particular, like, Ooh, your friends, you know? Uh, and, uh, and I think that's a good thing to remember that when we're telling teens, choose your friends wisely, we're really saying sometimes you have to choose to have no friends. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't control who wants to be your friend. Yeah, and there's not an unlimited group of people. Yeah, and I mean, even if they aren't like actively bullying you or being mean, they may just like, just not want to be your friend. And that's just the way life is. <laughs> yeah, and the acceptance of that. Yeah, so I think that that's something that that we're seeing here with Carrie is uh, that Sebastian, obviously there's a romantic element as well, but he's the one that wants to be with her yeah you know yeah as well as her other friends and mm-hmm. uh, and so 
that's what you have to work with. These are the cards that you've been dealt. (laughs) That's why I would tell her that this is the cards you've been dealt dad. Now you have to deal with it. You got (laughs) to deal with it. It's not going away. So you have to figure out some kind of strategy. Yeah. Right. We're dealing with this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless you literally move and put her in a different school, that's, that would be the only way to really get rid of Sebastian in your, in your family's life. And and I mean, Austin Butler, look at him. I know for real. (laughs) Uh, And then we have, uh, yeah, that's the end. It ends with the labels. She's writing her journal. And uh, that's it. I would give this one a pretty low score. I just thought that whole thing with exposing yourself and the way it handled Sebastian, I would give this a four. I think. Yeah, I'd probably do a little higher because I was really entertained. I'd probably go like a 5.5, but I think with the uncomfortability of the way that was handled in addition to the teacher situation not addressing that like he was a victim in that I think yeah. there's a lot of missteps yeah yeah well let us know if you've seen these two episodes what you thought of them we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section or on twitter and Jax, where can people find you at Jacqueline C tweets on twitter and Jacqueline Collier on instagram great and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews all of our social media iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also make sure you're following us at City Girls Pod on Twitter and also uh, the Hallmarkies podcast all over social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you're watching YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We have our playlist of all the Sex and City content that we've done. Uh, I'll put the link to that in the description. And we have our patron group, which is the best way to support us. So please take a look at that. And we have the merch store, which you can get City Girls Pod merch. Check that out. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Bye.